Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Steve McLaughlin, Vice President of Operations for the National Empty Museum Foundation, and I have the honor of being your Master of Ceremonies today. On behalf of our Chairman, Lieutenant General Tom Metz, and our President, Brigadier General Pete Jones, thank you for joining us this morning. We'd like to take a moment to recognize some of our distinguished guests. Please hold your applause until the end. In the official party, today's guest speaker, the Chief of Armor, Brigadier General David Lesperance. The chaplain for today's ceremony, Colonel Robert Hart. National Infantry Museum Foundation Director of Dedications, Ms. Eileen Kent. And also attending today, U.S. Representative for Georgia's 2nd Congressional District, Congressman Sanford Bishop. Georgia Representative for the 135th District, Representative Calvin Smyrie. Chairman Emeritus of the National Infantry Museum Foundation, Lieutenant General Carmen Caveza. Civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. John Hargrove. Commander for the Maneuver Center of Excellence in Fort Benning, Major General Gary Brito. Field Representative for Sanford David Perdue, Ms. Kathy Burns. President of the National Empty Museum Foundation, Brigadier General Pete Jones. Vice Chairman of the National Empty Museum Foundation, Colonel Carl Savory. President Emeritus of the National Empty Museum Foundation, Mr. Ben Williams. President Emeritus of the National Empty Museum Foundation, Colonel Greg Camp. Deputy Commandant, United States Army Armor School, Colonel David Davidson. Command Sergeant Major, Maneuver Center of Excellence, Command Sergeant Major Scott Brzak. Command Sergeant Major, United States Army Infantry School, Command Sergeant Major Martin Celestine. Command Sergeant Major, United States Army Armor School, Command Sergeant Major Kevin Mullenbeck. Executive Director of the Armor and Calvary Heritage Foundation, Command Sergeant Major Ricky Young. Our 1775 members whose generous annual contributions help fund the operation of the museum and our Patriot Guard Riders, whom we can always count on to be here for every dedication. And of course, all of you who have traveled from near and far to be in attendance as your loved ones or your own paver is dedicated today on the Heritage Walk. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all our distinguished visitors. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation given by the Fort Benning Garrison Chaplain, Colonel Robert Hart. Active and retired military members should place uh, your hand over your heart. Um, I kind of messed that up because I'm thinking about an outdoor ceremony. Uh, but uh, for all of, our, all of our civilian members, please place your hand over heart, your heart during the national anthem. Join me in prayer. Our gracious God, as we pause here this morning, we remember and we dedicate this time to honor those that have given their all for the freedoms of our nation. We remember the men and women of our military who have sacrificed for our country, allowing us to enjoy the treasures of life and liberty. They have paid for this with their lives. Lord, we ask now your blessings on this ceremony this morning as we honor those who have sacrificed for our nation. May your blessings be upon them and on their families as we dedicate these pavers in their memory, Lord. May you serve as a reminder of the sacrifices for generations to come. We ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Please welcome Ms. Eileen Kent, Director of Dedications for the National Infantry Museum Foundation. Thank you. Welcome everybody. Good morning. And welcome to your National Infantry Museum. We know that you have traveled from near and far to be with us today. Your support and commitment to this museum and its mission to honor soldiers past, present, and future has allowed us to reach the 6,000 paver mark, including the over 200 pavers being dedicated today. Today, of course, is Memorial Day, 
a day set aside to pause, to reflect and remember and give special honor and thanks to those who've made the ultimate sacrifice to preserve the freedoms we enjoy in this country. Some in battle, some in training, and others from wounds that are invisible to the eye. April was the month of the military child, or military parlance, a military brat. But military service, it's important to note, is not limited to just the service member. When any member of our armed forces makes the ultimate sacrifice, we must remember those left behind, including the children. At this time, allow me to offer a warm welcome to our Gold Star families and their friends. In 2018, the Columbus community honors the centennial of Fort Benning. We also remember the end of World War I, a war that took the lives of over 20,000, uh, 200,000 US soldiers in the American Expeditionary Forces in France, and a war that saw over 37 million military and civilian casualties worldwide. President Franklin D. Roosevelt once said, those who have long enjoyed such privileges as we enjoy forget in time that men have died to win them. And of course, in today's military, women as well. At the same time, we also honor the generations of warriors with pavers being dedicated today, the Noakes family, Team Felock, and the Winsteads, to name a few. We are honored to have two very special men with us here today members of the greatest generation, would Sergeant James Paul Winstead and Lieutenant Colonel Henry Rempel and other World War II veterans please stand and also be recognized. Each paver is a permanent reminder of a person, organization, and or place and time. The pavers being dedicated today are in memory and honor of those in all branches of our armed forces, many of whom made that ultimate sacrifice. Some in the world wars, Korea, some in Vietnam, Vietnam some in other conflicts, and many now in the global war on terrorism. The commemorative paver program ensures that the memories of the men and women who've given their last measure of devotion so that we can enjoy the privileges mentioned by President Roosevelt are not forgotten. Thank you again for your attendance this morning to help us commemorate our fallen and dedicate the new pavers. We know there are a number of places where you could have chosen to honor your loved ones and are extremely grateful that you have entrusted us with your hero's memory. As you depart from here today, remember that you walked among heroes with their names etched in stone. Thank you. We're fortunate to have Congressman Sanford Bishop Jr. with us today. He enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1969 and completed basic training here at Fort Benning, Georgia. He then en enrolled in the Reserve Officer Training Corps and in 1971 received an honorable discharge. He is currently serving his 13th term in the U.S. House of Representatives, representing Georgia's 2nd Congressional District. Congressman Bishop has served on the House Committee on Appropriations since 2003. He also serves as the co-chair of the Congressional Military Family Caucus. Throughout his time in Congress, Congressman Bishop has steadfastly stood behind Fort Benning and the military community. Ladies and gentlemen, Congressman Sanford Bishop. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The scriptures tell us, greater love hath no man but that he lay down his life for his friends. This is a very special day. And there are so many distinguished guests from both Fort Benning and the National Infantry Museum that I would like to reference by name and thank for this opportunity to speak here today, but in the absence of time, the because of the limit of time, I'd like to acknowledge the most important guests that are present here today. 
And I'm referring to those military service members and families who've traveled from all over to honor the fallen today. Thank you for your service. Thank you for being here, and thank you for allowing me to share this with you today. I'd also like to recognize those who cannot be here today due to their service overseas, including Fort Benning's 1st Security Force Assistance Brigade, currently deployed in support of contingency operations in Afghanistan. They're working diligently in behalf of all of us, and for that, we give them our heartfelt thanks. Family and friends, today, we remember the millions of Americans who served our great nation. We owe a great debt to those few who sacrificed so much for so many in the name of freedom. This is a day when we remember those who gave their lives, who paid the ultimate price. And on Veterans Day, we honor all who have served, but today on Memorial Day, we remember those soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines that have paid that ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Winston Churchill captured it best when he said, never was so much owed by so many to so few. Fort Benning is the world's greatest military training base and home to the Maneuver Center of Excellence. This year is Fort Benning's centennial. Since this installation's inception 100 years ago, nearly 625,000 men and women have given their lives in the name of freedom. Although actors, athletes, and musicians are often put on pedestals and labeled heroes in our society, America's real heroes are being honored here today. Look around and see the faces of real heroes, and most importantly, Look at the names etched in the paver stones. These ladies and gentlemen are America's true heroes. I'm truly blessed to be here today, and as we dedicate the nearly 200 pavers for our brave heroes, uh, Abraham Lincoln once said, a nation that does not honor its heroes will not long endure. And this is what the dedication of these papers represents. These papers represent the sacrifice by service members from Vietnam to the global war on terror, and they represent their enduring legacy. Many of these service members even received their training right here at Fort Benning. We must also remember that not only does a service member serve, but so does that service member's family. Military spouses and children sacrifice a great deal for our country. Military families face challenges many Americans will never understand, especially those Gold Star family members who have lost a loved one. No words of condolence can fill the void that has been left by your loss, but today, and every day, we thank you and reflect on your loved one's selfless service and sacrifice for our nation. I'm privileged in my role as the co-chair of the Congressional Military Family Caucus and as a longtime member and former ranking member of the House Appropriations Subcommittee for Military Construction and Veterans Affairs. In this capacity, I've had the opportunity to honor veterans and their families in a greater capacity. There is no bigger issue that I have the opportunity to work on than ensuring the care for our nation's veterans and their families. With nearly 60,000 veterans in this district, and on behalf of the more than 730,000 constituents in Georgia's 2nd Congressional District, I thank you. I'm truly humbled to be able to speak with you today, and I thank you, I thank the family members in this audience for your devotion and your service at home and abroad. Let me leave you with this thought. President John Kennedy said that as we express gratitude, we must never forget the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. 
The selfless service displayed by the service members we honor today was not through their words, but through their actions. These actions of what have allowed us to be free. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Congressman Bishop, for those heartfelt remarks. It is now my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce our guest speaker. Brigadier General Les Brantz graduated from Portland State University in 1989 and was commissioned an armor officer. He has served in numerous leadership positions to include tank and support platoon leader, troop executive officer, S3 Air, battalion and brigade S3, and brigade, brigade executive officer. He also served as Assistant Deputy Director of Operations J3 on the Joint Staff, on the Multinational Division Baghdad Staff, and is the 3rd Armored Corps Chief of Staff. Prior to his current assignment, he was the Assistant Commanding General Support for Special Forces Command. Brigadier General Esperance commanded a recruiting company, Delta Company, and Headquarters and Headquarters Company, 1st Cavalry Division. He was a battalion commander for the 1st Battalion, 8th Cavalry Regiment, Honor and sir. And brigade commander for the 3rd Armored Brigade Combat Team, 1st Cavalry Division. Brigadier General Les Perez graduated from the United States Army War College in June of 2012. His numerous deployments include Operation Desert Storm, Operation Joint Forge, and three deployments in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. He's a proven combat leader and has earned the Combat Action Badge, Parachutist Badge, Ranger Tab, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff Identification Badge. A complete biography and list of his awards are included in your program. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commandant of the United States Army Armor School and Chief of Armor and Cavalry, Brigadier General David A. Lesperance. Sound check. Self-awareness, I, I know how loud my voice is, so Sergeant Major Celestine, when I Go up or down, you keep me, keep, me, keep me on track here. I'll tell you what, every time I walk in to this wonderful facility, I see something new. Very recently, I was walking the grounds, and I, you know, you know one thing that uh, I don't know why I say is I actually enlisted into the 41st Infantry Brigade in 1986 when I was uh, in college as a young PFC. And I didn't realize until very recently that there was a memorial that was recently dedicated to the 41st Division and the 41st Brigade. And it's a wonderful uh, memorial. For those that are here, the, the, these grounds are phenomenal. N not only what's in this building, but also what's in all the grounds on, uh, in the entirety of the complex. Take a moment to, 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 uh, for, to, to go and, and look at what, quite frankly, is an Army treasure here at the National Infantry Museum. Uh, thanks to the team for what you do every day here to, in support of soldiers and their families. And, uh, and we, can't, we couldn't do what we do every day without your support. Thank you. Uh, Congressman Bishop, Major General and Mrs. Uh, Brito, Command Sergeant Majors Burzak, Celestine, and Muhlenbeck, Gold Star family members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and friends of Fort Benning, uh, welcome. Last year, the Army began a two-year-long centennial commemoration of America's involvement in World War I. Fort Benning shares a special connection to the centennial because our entry into World War I brought about the foundation of Camp Benning 100 years ago, this October. As we mark a century since the end of the war to end all wars, we are reminded of the true cost. American Doughboys fought in 13 campaigns one of the first major American battles in the war took place in May of June of, tw of, of 1918 in the Aymar campaign. The French names of other battles include Chateau, uh, Chateau Terry, Cantigny, Marne, and Bella Wood, which will all forever represent the bravery and sacrifice of American soldiers. And that's why this day is so important to all Americans. Memorial Day gives us the opportunity to stop and think about those brave Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our great nation and pay a well-deserved tribute to those who ensured for us the freedoms we now enjoy. Many of you know the history of this holiday. If so, you know that this is not Veterans Day and it's not Armed Forces Day. 
It has far deeper meaning. As we take this day to remember the fallen, to stand in solidarity with their loved ones and remember their sacrifice, and look back through our country's 242 year history to honor all those who gave their lives for our freedom and liberty, let us not forget, nor let others forget what this day is truly about. Memorial Day is about honoring those that have given their lives in the service of their country. And with this paver dedication today, remember those that dedicated so much to our country. While all of the 224 pavers that we are dedicating today are important, I would like to highlight just a few. Uh, today we are dedicating pavers at Memorial a lifetime of service as well. And there is a paver for Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster, the recently retired from the United States Army and former National Security Advisor and former Commanding General of the Maneuver Center of Excellence, as well as Lieutenant General retired Guy Swan, 57th Colonel of the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment. We're also dedicating pavers to generations of service. Uh, the Noakes family is represented on five pavers for five family members who served our nation from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War, and the Global War on Terror. Chief Noakes, if you're here, can you please stand and be recognized? I'm not sure if you've made it today. Okay. All right. Uh, well, all good, Mr. Mr. Noakes. We've, we've highlighted your, your, your family's contributions throughout the generations. It's all good. Um, today, we're dedicating over 30 pavers to soldiers that died in service to our country. Soldiers like First Lieutenant Louis J. Koch, Jr. of the 702nd Tank Destroyer Battalion, who gave his life in France on 14 August 1944. And Sergeant Michael F. Paranzino of First, Battalion, uh, First Squadron, 71st Cavalry Regiment, who was killed by an improvised explosive device in Kandahar, Afghanistan on 5 November 2010. And Staff Sergeant Eric Kaban assigned to 3rd Battalion, 7th Special Forces Group, who died 19 July 2006 during operations in southern Afghanistan. Second Lieutenant Justin L. Sisson of 1st Battalion, 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment, was killed 3 June 2013 in Samkami, Afghanistan, or Specialist Devin J. Kuhn of the 2nd Battalion, 75th Range Regiment, who died earlier this year on 31 January 18 from wounds suffered during a training exercise at Camp Rialea in Oregon. We are reminded that the world remains a very dangerous place and that our soldiers are in harm's way uh, across the globe. Today, we continue to honor those left behind, those who paid a very personal price for us and our nation, our Gold Star families. Could the families of Second Lieutenant uh, Justin Sisson, Specialist Devin Kuhn, as well as all the Gold Star family members in the audience, please stand right now. Go ahead, please stand. <laughs> Allow me to express my appreciation to you on behalf of all those present today. We are humbled by your sacrifice, inspired by resilience, and grateful for your continued service to your communities. As we dedicate these 224 pavers today in honor of the fallen this Memorial Day and this, the 100th year since the signing of the armistice that ended World War I, I'm reminded of the words of President Woodrow Wilson when he spoke at France's Serene Cemetery on Memorial Day in 1919. The fallen who lie here are a unique breed. They crossed the seas to a foreign land to fight for a cause which they did not pretend was their own, but knew was the cause of humanity and mankind. They did not come across the sea merely to defeat the enemy. They came to defeat forever the things for which the enemy stood for. The sort of power they meant to assert in the world, the arrogant, selfish dominance which they meant to establish, and they came moreover to see it so that there should never be a war like this again. And in their loss and the loss of those before and since, these fallen heroes remind you what America said she was born for. She was born, she said, to show mankind the way to liberty. She was born to make this great gift a common gift, and we ask all to join us in this common cause, where we need to wear no uniform except the uniform of the heart closing ourselves with the principles of right and saying to everyone everywhere, you are brothers and sisters, and we invite you into the comradeship of liberty and peace. When we have succeeded in this, 
when we have ensured liberty and peace, when nations and peoples join us in this great cause, then we'll have no more fitting tribute to those we honor today. Those who gave their all so that we may live free. Thank you. Thank you, General Les Bryant, for those meaningful remarks. Since last Memorial Day, the National Empty Museum Foundation and Fort Benning's Army Museum Division opened our American Revolution and Civil War Gallery, which is to your rear. In October of 2017, we dedicated an outdoor memorial remembering the legacy of the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who have been engaged in the global war on terror since September 11, 2001. The memorial contains the names of service members of all branches who have given their full measure of devotion in the global war on terrorism. Nine seven-foot statues represent the infantry rifle squad and a metal beam from the World Trade Center's North Tower, which was escorted here by members of the Fire Department of New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of Taps in Memory of Our Fallen, played by Specialist Dan Adams, and remain standing for the benediction. Receive the Lord's benediction. Lord, as we go from this place, we ask that you would dismiss us now with your blessings. May the words that have been spoken and the expressions of love and thankfulness that is shared be remembered and honored. As we continue, we ask your blessings upon our soldiers and our families. We ask your blessings upon our nation. We ask that your peace would go with us and that we might be about your people. We pray this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. This concludes today's ceremony. Museum volunteers and staff are available to assist you in locating your paver. Please take this opportunity to share your own stories and enjoy this beautiful day at the museum. A list of activities is included in your program. Thank you for attending and thank you for your continued support of your National Empty Museum, a place to remember. <laughs>